The demonization of capitalism in our free market economy is at the core of this policy, and that's what the Unilever CEO actually outright admits. Make the case based on your evidence for the people here who might like to do what you're doing but think it's not economically feasible. I uh, love the challenging question, Mr. President. Um, of course, when you were being taught at law school, you were taught about fiduciary responsibility. And um, I think most chief execs carry around that sense of fiduciary responsibility and wear it heavily. Um, there is an element of risk and risk avoidance associated with trying to run a business on a sustainable platform. Right now, our company in Pakistan, one of our finest businesses around the world, is underwater. Um, we'll push through that, um, but it's not a great place to be selling food or personal care products when you're underwater or on fire. But I want to shift the emphasis away from risk to opportunity, the other side of fiduciary responsibility. The evidence is building so quickly that people want to buy products from companies and brands that operate to high standards of sustainable behavior and ethical conduct. And our brands, which people see as being making a positive contribution to society or the planet, are growing three times faster than the rest of our portfolio. It's a simple matter of consumer choice. There are often costs in the short term. But we've saved about 1.2 billion euros through sustainable sourcing. This need not be an on cost. And of course, there's uh, the reputational side um, of sustainability. Unilever is now the employer of choice in 50 countries around the world in our sector because it's a magnet for young talent. People want to come and join companies where they can make a positive impact. So uh, just to be unambiguous, Unilever is not an NGO, we're a for-profit organization, and our commitment to sustainable business and proper conduct is very strongly driven by serving our shareholders as a consequence of serving our people, our customers, our societies, and the communities that we do business in. That is such a BS claim when he says consumers want brands that are sustainable. Absolutely BS. Look at even a woke brand, for example, look at Nike. Where does Nike produce their sneakers? In China. Who exactly produces the sneakers in China? Sweatshops? Slave labor from the Uyghur Muslims? Consumers don't care about that. They're not willing to boycott Nike. The only people in this country who you hear talking about their objections to using actual slave labor in communist China to produce products that are then sold by companies around the world, but particularly in the United States, are a small minority of conservatives. But consumers at large actually don't care about this. They might pretend to care about it, but they do not care about that. He is making that up. The reason, by the way, that young people, if it's even true that young people want to work at a company because they feel like they can make a positive difference, the reason young people want to work for a woke company is because our schooling system from public school, I'm talking elementary school, middle school, high school, through, through college and university, are indoctrinating people in radical leftist ideology. It's because then they're, they're then being recruited from radical leftist universities by a radical leftist organization. It's not because they independently notice that Unilever is, is acting the way that they are. But really, the big picture, those are, those are my nitty-gritty <laughs> criticisms with what he said, just stupid, idiotic stuff that he's saying. But truthfully, what he is expressing is the idea, and you'll hear this from those who propagate ESG. This is, this is actually the fundamental message that they're trying to imprint on your brain, is that you can't do good and do well. You can't do good for society and also do well financially. This message is the complete opposite of what a free market economy and a capitalist society has proven, that transactions between businesses and consumers 
that yes, profits businesses because they're selling a consumer something that consumer needs, that that is a mutually beneficial interaction, a voluntary and mutually beneficial interaction. So that phrase right there, you can't do well and do good, or you can't do good and do well, is anti-capitalist.